Hi and welcome to the channel. In today's video I'm doing something a bit different to what I normally do. I've actually got a cladding clean of the whole of this unit behind me here, all four sides of that and uh, the, there's another unit up the top which is the front of which is quite a high one. So in today's video I'm going to show you how I priced it, the equipment I'm using and why I made the decisions that I did to uh, use that equipment and do it that way. So just before uh, we start in the main video I'm just going to quickly show you around the factory that's across the entire front there this is looking up going along the front we've got a big two meter uh, soffit overhang there which was really hard there's a lot of cobwebs on this uh, and took some really hard scrubbing uh, that's looking up to the far end of it and across the windows that were on the front just quickly looking back along it okay. this is the back side of the unit on two big doors and a couple of sets of windows which weren't too bad now this is down the back uh, it was a different type of cladding the uh, was vertical cladding and this was really nice to clean actually the brushes dropped into that really nicely and worked really well on cladding that you also got no soffit there so that made it a lot easier And then there was just finally the back end here. Now that soffit was about uh, two foot wide, so a lot easier. We've also got this building at the end of it, which I just about managed with my 40 foot pole. It's actually day three now and we've actually just finished cleaning it to be honest. So uh, just have a quick look at some of the footage from the day from day one. So when I got asked to price this, the first thing I did was to uh, measure up the size of the factory. So all the heights, the lengths, uh, the average heights on the gable ends, and then multiplied that all up. So I got a total area of what I needed to clean. Once I got the total area of what I needed to clean, I worked out how much I wanted per meter for cleaning it, and then added that on and came up with a figure. Now. I, it was quite a reasonable figure I thought but I thought well just make sure and so I added a bit more onto that well quite a bit more actually onto that and um, yeah came up with a decent figure for cleaning it. The first thing I needed to do was work out how I was going to clean it. Now I did think about uh, using a pressure washer and getting an extending lance and going it all around it with a pressure washer but there was two reasons that I couldn't really do that. Number one was the little plastic caps that go over the cladding screws I didn't want to be blowing all those off and have to replace a load of those so that was number one but more importantly reason number two was that um, there wasn't a very good water supply here there was water here but very low pressure and I haven't got a tow bar so it's not even that I could carry a bowser or towing a bowser full of water so I decided against pressure washing so I decided I was going to brush it once I decided I was going to brush it I I made another visit to the site which is about 40 minutes from where I live made another visit to the site and I did a test section probably a couple of meters along um, under this section just here which has got like a two meter overhang on it uh, there's a gutter along the front here uh, which was really green really manky so I did a test section on that and just using hot water and it actually came up really well so that was the uh, way I decided to clean it all was with an extending pole, a brush, a normal window cleaning pole and brush and using hot water. I also thought about using TFR uh, or some sort of degreaser, TFR, that type of thing over the whole lot but uh, a client of mine that actually does quite a lot of this type of work said there's two problems with TFR. Number one is it can leave the cladding looking a little bit dull and number two is a lot of these industrial units have catchment tanks to catch any rain flow flow off uh, and when you put chemicals into this they get a, can get a bit upset about it and end up having to charge you to empty the tanks to clean them out so I decided I wasn't going to use any TFR or anything literally just pure water but at about 
uh, 45 to 50 degrees and I found that really brought the dirt off really nicely. So the next problem I had was I've got a 600 litre tank in my van. I was coming here with that full but as I said it was 40 minutes to get home. It would take too long to go back and fill that up and I use way more than that during the day with two people on it and just continuous scrubbing. Um, I'm probably using 1500 litres a day. So and the other thing is that um, I, I came with a tank of hot water but if I just filled that up from the tap here I decided to use tap water rather than pure because there's no windows but um, yeah if I just use tap water then that would go colder throughout the day so I bought myself an LPG uh, gas heater which has worked really really well it's ever so simple to use there's three ports in the bottom one is the gas for the gas bottle one is for the cold water coming in and one is for the hot water going it out. Now that LPG gas bottle uh, was £60 deposit for the bottle and then £40 to fill the bottle and I've probably used over the last three days probably around about half a bottle and I'll get me deposit back on, on that uh, gas bottle. It's got two batteries in the bottom, two of the big ones about that round, about that deep and it's self-igniting so as soon as you plug the cold hose into the heater it comes on automatically. We've set it so it heats up to 50 degrees and at 50 degrees we're producing about six litres a minute. Now going out of the tank we are going out at about five litres a minute so we've got more water going in hot than we have coming out cold so we've got a good flow going on of that and we're not going to run out so that has worked really well. So what equipment am I using? As I said, I'm using the extending poles. I've got my two over eight uh, poles, my high mod and my standard, and then I've got my 40 foot over eight. I also bought some Gardner cladding brushes. Now, I bought the 45 centimeter ones. I thought, like the windows, wider brush, cover a bigger area and work really well. But when you're on it for three days continuously without any break, there's just too much weight in that. So I ended up, using a um, gardener, I can't remember if it's an ultimate or universal sill brush uh, and I also used an ultimate stiff but I, both of them are the 26 centimeter ones rather than the wider ones. If I'd have known how well this brush would have got on I'd have bought another one of these to go with it. This is the medium to soft, looks really filthy now because there's been a lot of algae that we've got off but Using the narrower brush it would all, and with the curved ends on, it worked really, really well. Uh, getting in between the grooves in all the cladding and with this 26 centimetre brush, you haven't got too much weight there either. So I really found that worked absolutely brilliantly. So I've done the job with two men, myself and another man. Uh, two days I had Sam, my brother, with me and then the middle day I had Elijah, who you've probably seen on the videos before. And we thought about bringing three men all together, but I wouldn't have had enough flow from the tank, um, and so I wouldn't have been any better off using three men. When I originally thought about using TFR, I was going to have three men on, and then I'd have had one man applying the TFR and scrubbing it in, and then the others brushing off afterwards. But as I wasn't using TFR, it was just as quick just to have the two men, and it worked really well. The second day uh, when Elijah came, there's a, a few sets of windows, there's uh, a couple of sets there. I think there's about four sets of windows on this long side here, and then there's a couple of sets on the uh, on the back. So the middle day, we brushed, washed it all down with tap water, but that left obviously left watermarks on the windows because of the chlorine in it and the lime scale. And then, so Elijah came in in his own van yesterday, and he was able to go over all the windows with pure water because he brought a tank of water. With him. So, came up with all the windows looking really good. So now you know how I did it and why I made those choices. Let's have a look at a bit of cleaning.
So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, it's really made me ache to be honest. It's three really full on days and it gets you in the shoulders by the end of the first few days. If you think of anything that you'd have done differently, it's the first one I've done so um, I'm just making it up as I go along really. Um, it has worked well and I made some nice money on it. So if there's anything that you'd have done differently, uh, let me know. Put it in the comments below, I'd really appreciate that and uh, thanks for watching. Bye for now.